I'm Chairman Boxer. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, for me, today marks the bipartisan end of a rubber stamp Senate, and I am proud to be here in behalf of the people of California. Madam Secretary, on November 7th, the American people voted for a change in Congress, citing Iraq as the number one issue affecting their vote. And a week later, General Abizade told the Senate Armed Services Committee that he checked with every single divisional commander on the ground in Iraq and to a person. No one believed that more American troops would improve the situation because the Iraqis already rely on us too much. And then on December 7th, the Iraq Study Group, noting that 61% of the Iraqis who you say support us so much approve of attacks on U.S. troops. They approve of shooting and killing U.S. troops. Uh, the Iraqi study group, in light of that, recommended that U.S. combat troops should be redeployed out of Iraq by early 08. They also called for an immediate meeting, uh, international meeting, in the region to find a political solution to Iraq. And one line that stands out in that uh, Iraq study report is, uh, quote, Absent a political solution, all the troops in the world will not provide security. And on January 8th, the Military Times, and I'd ask unanimous consent to place this into the record, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I place this in the record, the Military Times? The no, Military Jeff, Times published a poll which found that only 35% of military members approved of the way President Bush is handling this war and only 38% thought there should be more troops. So from where I sit, Madam Secretary, you are not listening to the American people. You are not listening to the military. You are not listening to the bipartisan voices from the Senate. You are not listening to the Iraq study group. Only you know who you are listening to. And you wonder why there is a dark cloud of skepticism, and pessimism over this nation. I think people are right to be skeptical after listening to some of the things that have been said by your administration. For example, October 19th, 05, you came before this committee to discuss, in your words, how we assure victory in Iraq. And you said the following in answer to Senator Feingold. I have no doubt that as the Iraqi security forces get better, and they are getting better, and are holding territory, and they are doing the things with minimal help, we are going to be able to bring down the level of our forces. I have no doubt, I want to reiterate, I have no doubt that that's going to happen in a reasonable time frame. You had no doubt, not a doubt. And last night, the President's announcement of an escalation is a total rebuke of your confident pronouncement. Now, the issue is, who pays the price? Who pays the price? I'm not going to pay a personal price. My kids are too old and my grandchild is too young. You're not going to pay a particular price, as I understand it, with an immediate family. So who pays the price? The American military and their families. And I just want to bring us back to that fact. NPR has done a series of interviews with families who have lost kids. And the announcer said to one family in the Midwest, what's changed in your lives since your son's death? The answer comes back, everything. You can't begin to imagine how even the little things change, how you go through the day, how you celebrate Christmas. Mr. Chairman, could I please? I, I'm, you can't begin to imagine how you celebrate any holiday or birthday. There's an absence. It's not like the person's never been there. They've always were there, and now they're not, and you're looking at an empty hole. He has a purple heart, the flag that was on his coffin, and one of the two urns that we got back. He came back in three parts, two urns and one coffin. He's buried in three places if you count our house. He's buried in New Jersey. He's buried in Cleveland. That's who's going to pay the price. And then you have the most moving Thing I've ever heard on a radio station, which is a visit to a burn unit and a talk with the nurse. Devin suffered burns over 93% of his body, three amputations, both legs, one arm. His back was broken, internal organs exposed. As the hospital staff entered the room, they would see photographs on the wall. 
pictures of healthy private standing proud in his dark green army dress uniform. It's very important, says the major, that nurses see the patient as a person because the majority of our patients have facial burns and they're unrecognizable and they're extremely disfigured. So who pays the price? Not me, not you. These are the people who pay the price. So I want to ask you, since this administration has been so clear about how this has been a coalition and a coalition, you've already said that we don't have anybody else escalating their presence at this time. Is that correct? That is correct. Have you seen the recent news that the British are going to be bringing home thousands of troops in the near future? I have seen uh, the stories about what the British are going to do. I'll wait for a confirmation from the British government about what they're going to do. Okay, I would ask unanimous consent to place into the record uh, the article from today that announces that that's what they're going to do, is bring home thousands of troops. And I want to point out to the American people, we are all alone. We are all alone. There's no other country standing with us in this escalation. And if you look at this coalition, the closest to us, we've got about 130, 140,000 troops. I, I don't know the exact number. The Brits had 7,200. They're going to be announcing they're bringing home, as I understand it, more than 3,000 of those. The next biggest coalition member is Poland with 900. And after that, Australia with 300. No one is joining us in this surge. Do you have an estimate of the number of casualties we expect from this surge? No, uh, Senator, I don't think there's any way to uh, give you such an estimate. Has the President, because he said expect more sacrifice, he must know. Senator, I don't think that uh, any of us uh, have a number that of expected casualties. I think that people understand that there is going to be violence for some time in Iraq and that uh, there will be uh, more casualties. And let me just say, you know, I fully understand the uh, sacrifice that the American people are making and especially the sacrifice that our soldiers are making, men and women in uniform. I, I visit them. I know what they're going through. I talk to their families. I see it. I could never and I can never do anything to replace any of those uh, lost uh, men and women in uniform or the diplomats, uh, some of whom. Madam no, Secretary, lost. please, I, I know you feel terrible about it. That's not the point. I was making the case as to who pays the price for your decisions. And the fact that this administration would move forward with this escalation with no clue as to the further price that we're going to pay militarily. We certainly know the numbers, billions of dollars that we can't spend here in this country. I find really appalling that there's not even enough time taken to figure out